Game number one goes to elevate relatively smoothly. Let's see what happens in game number two. As far as the picks and bands are concerned, anything that you want to see specifically changed? No, I think the Poppies had the right sort of composition. Maybe take Delo off that nemesis. Not necessarily, you know, his his ult target selection wasn't great sure. by any means, and, and he didn't really make an impact in that game. But that that's kind of, it's a 50-50. His fault and the team's fault at the same time as it usually is with nemesis. So maybe just take him off that and put him on a god that you know he can really perform well on. His Robin is really, really scary. Give him that pressure in the early game and then allow him to kind of continue it in the mid. Well, Scotty and RDO band out here, sticking to the meta this time around. Elevate do have the first pick. Poppy's on the second side. So the Geb band by Elevate. I mean, sure. Just uh, in that first pick position, the Poppies have two gods they probably want to ban in this scenario. You make them ban one, Elevate takes the other. Geb is just a good god that Draco play performs pretty well on usually. Now Elevate kind of has their pick as to what they want in that first slot. I like the ban of the Nox coming out here from the Poppies. I think, they, again, this is just something that they're, they're uh, for a team on the come up, right? You practice against what you're most likely going to see. The Nox support is probably something that they don't have that much practice playing against, and they know it's going to crush them on Elevate. So it's like, all right, keep your pocket strategy in the pocket. We don't want to deal with it. Love what Elevate do by selecting the Arlong Shen. I think uh, I wonder how close they were to picking Thoth because I think that might have been my first pick if I'm Elevate just to keep it out of Mr. Nazer's hands. I mean, he looked like a completely different player on that soul, not yeah. nearly as effective as he usually is on this Thoth. So that would have put him in a bad spot again, but instead they go for the Erlong Shen. Death Panther has a big enough God pool that that's not a problem for him, but it does give Mr. Nazer his best pick. Jermaine's going to pick up the ROM one more time. Love this guy and this character. I think he just provides so much, like you said, flexibility with the ultimate. Not always looking for the kill, but will will go for it, but also can start the damage with it as well. Ryzen going to be the selection for Elevate's mid lane. Just pressure in that mid lane and, and can kind of pressure out that Thoth in the early stages. Thoth is all about bad early game, great late game. Yeah. Ryzen is about great early game, good enough late <laughs> game. It's not, it's not bad. It's not Thoth level, though. No. And, and you're, it's all about getting that pressure and control and kind of dominating the early to mid. I like Ryzen's late game. I, I think his damage is really big. And the fact that it, the uh, the chain lightning effect from the Raiju, I think players underestimate that. So not not as much like raw, I'll kill one dude, but it brings everybody down low. Yes. I think that has a big effect on the game. Second round of bans here. Uh, we'll fix that one in a second. But the uh, Sylvanas ban from the Poppies, they really didn't like that out of Dardes, huh? Yeah, I guess not. And that's the kind of power that you can have. You, you perform well enough in game one with a god that usually doesn't get picked or banned very often these days. And you do well enough that you force the enemy team to ban it. This opens the door for more support options for Elevate that mm -hmm. might usually get banned. By the way, we're six picks in and no Terra at yep. all. Nope. No pick or ban from Terra. And Poppies are going to have the first pick coming out of this ban phase. And I expect it to be Terra for Draco Marino. Uh, that, te that second get ban was a hell ban. I like that choice out of Elevate. We'll see what their final ban will be. And it's going to be the the Ho Yi, excuse me. I, I fully expect Draco Marino pick up his Terra. He looks fantastic on this character. It's just such a strong pick. Can't believe it's gotten uh, this deep into the draft. Maybe Poppies want to go a different direction. Maybe something like Fafnir or Ganesh. Or Artemis. Or Artemis. They can kind of wait it out. This does give Elevate the opportunity to pick Terra, who does incredibly well into Artemis. Yeah. Punishes those immobile gods very, very well. But Ares could be good here. But said so it's going to be Ymir. I like this pick. A lot of picks I for the Poppies pick. that can't get up and over that wall. Aggressive like Dardes likes to be. This yep. is a guy that Dardes is very well versed on as well. This is a good pick here. I think this is a prime example of when you go, when, I always talk about going with your identity, not the meta. Yeah. Right? And this is a prime example. You're not just picking weird for weird's sake. We're looking for a character that's going to lock down immobile gods like Artemis. Uh, we mentioned a couple. Ymir, just a little bit more Dardes' flavor, but still tackling the issue the same way we wanted to. And Ganesh is the right response by Poppies. Terra wouldn't have been the best pick there. Now Ganesh, who can go through those player-made walls with that charge, is going to be able to be a little bit safer and still bring that initiation, peel, clear, everything that you want out of your support. Yeah, this one's going to be a fun one. Elevate versus the Poppies as Poppies look for their revenge in game number two. Death Panda on that Ryzen. We'll start off with him and Chario on... Could be, I, I think you could call Cherio's Hun Bats one of his signature cards. Him, Naja, definitely the characters that I think of when I think of Cherio. Absolutely. His online performance with, with uh, Hun Bats has always really impressed me. He uh, just always looks very comfortable on this character. And Hun Bats is one of those gods that isn't always 
insane, isn't always a, a top pick in the meta, but for certain players will always be a viable strategy because of how how versatile the kit is, how much playmaking potential it has, and of course, Fear No Evil being one of the best ultimates in the game. Uh, yeah, straight up Fear No Evil, never a point in time where Hunbats is out of the meta, in my opinion. I mean, if you can play more than one of Wheelish, maybe. But I, I really don't think that Hunbats well, is a character that ever can. walks away. You can pick a Willish and then the Morrigan and get a second of Willish. I, I, I am willing to trade you. For anybody in production that wants to cast today, you guys can step right up. You made an interesting point about Draco Marino's uh, choice here. We never get to see that. The fact that he break, uh, goes through the player-made walls. Yeah, it's not one of those things that happens too often is... Dardes looking to invade all by himself. No hand of the gods. Warchi just kind of allowing him to do it. He got it. <laughs> why, did, why did Warchi let him do that? Oh, you kid, don't don't go for the purple as well. I'm very. I I don't know if Warchi just didn't hear the sounds happening. He he knows he's getting pressured. That's why Warchi's starting on the back harpies. He right. knows that he's going to get out cleared. He's going to get it out pressure. He did it to him. But Warchi just lets Dardes take both buffs. From him on the left hand side. So if Warchi, if Warchi like the, the, the red buff goes the way of Dardes, you can say, all right, you know what? He didn't notice this center or third. You, letting him take both of those buffs, I think, is an egregious mistake. I, I just don't like him not starting in lane with Draco Marino, allowing themselves to get out pushed, but at least getting some guaranteed farm on the left hand side. And look, it isn't the end of the world. We've seen hunters, you know, be down. Jermaine was up two levels on Emilito, or do down two levels to Emilito. Emma was level three, while Jermaine was still sitting with zero experience at level one. And Jermaine comes back and makes an impact in that game. The these early games for hunters do matter, of course, as Jermaine's now up three levels on Warchi. <laughs> but Warchi will come back and be impactful in sure. this game. It's just going to take a little bit longer. One thing I do want to mention about Dardis' approach in the jungle, he has himself a jungle mask, a Bumba's mask. Uh, that's going to allow him to deal a little bit of extra damage. I think that I think that level up sound gave Cherry away. May have, but even <laughs> without it, Warchi still I assume has purification beads, and being that close to the tower line, it, it's a risky call to try and go aggressive in that scenario. Regardless. Two level fours against a level two Artemis. I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking Again, it. A level two Artemis with a tier one tower? Nah, I'll give it to the Artemis there. I don't know. Can we call the players up and make them do what we say? Yeah, I don't <laughs> see why not. Jerio kind of playing, kind of playing uh, support here in this game. It's an interesting history lesson. Cherio used to play support once upon a time. Started as a jungler, played around in support. Didn't really go well for him, so he finds himself back in the jungle. But here, as the poppies go up against elevate, elevate, trying new things. Dardes is much more mobile, hanging out with the mid laner, and Cherio kind of stuck in this lane with the hunter. And it's just better clear with Dardes in the mid lane as opposed to the Hun Bats that early Amir clear is so potent. By now, with two points into overhand smash, that Hun Bat's probably rivaling the clear of Ymir in the early game. But the, a lot of kill potential with Ymir pre-level 5 as opposed to Hun Bat's who really needs to wait until level 5 to have that potential. When you look at the clear level across the way, you're... Not competing with an Artemis when it comes to clear, put it that way. She's just not doing it. So you can afford to put your lower end clear in that lane because there's less competition there. And like you said, you, you shove the good clear over there in the mid lane. Fear no evil online. And Cheerio. now the kills can happen yep. for Cherio. That's kind of what Hunbat struggles with is the pre-level five. But now that he has it, there's a good opportunity for him to play aggressive. I like the, I like how Dalo tosses out the, uh, the teleport and goes, okay. What happens now? Do you jump on me and I port? Force it. Red buff, invade, goes the way. Oh, it looks like elevate, but there's a fear to evil. Dragon Marino in trouble. Frozen! And Dardes! That's exactly the way he wanted to start this game off. First blood for the support. One, none, elevate. Among supports that I want getting first blood, Dardes is near the top, and now he's probably going to get second whoa, blood. Whoa, 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 perfect. And there's the ultimate, Warchi getting low. Jermaine just has to pop right through the wall. Can he get it? It's going to go up. You know Jermaine's going to clean up those snipes. No hype necessary because he's going to get those every single time. Two ultimates, but you get the kill on the Warchi. Keep him before level five. And you get the purification beads. Elevate just dominating the left side of the map early on, which is what you have to do against Artemis. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I, I, I like I love the Ymir performance. Ymir is one of these characters that's so simple but absolutely can just ruin your day if you let him. And sheesh. 
yeah, he's off to a start, and that's very scary for the guys with the puppies. That's all I was about to say. Among supports in terms of gods and players yeah. that I want getting first blood, Ymir near the top, Dardes near the top. I mean, I want guys like Dardes, like Aurora, these, ag these aggressive supports that want to make those playmaking abilities, even with no one else on their team around them. Mm -hmm. Dardes is at the point where he could solo Warchi and not have to commit a whole lot to do it. Well, I mean, like I said, I, look look at the build. It's Bumba's Mask and, and Watcher's Gift. He's jungle Ymir. They are just double, double jungling at this point. He will go the uh, tank boots over there to keep himself relatively tanky as the game gets further and further, but Frostbite, 100% extra damage on your basic attack following up an ability. You don't need power for that. You're totally fine. Base damage, etc. He's just... He's... Jungle point five, and, and he's two levels up over Warchi right now. And, and even with those tank boots, that's certainly enough damage to find that solo kill. And Warchi needs to be careful now. Lucky for him, even without purification beads, Dardas didn't go for blink. He went for shell instead, yeah. which is a nice de decision by Elevate. Now, at this point in the game, you're probably saying, "Man, I wish I had blink so that I could just keep this aggression <laughs> going." But in the case that Dardes does fall a little bit behind, does get a little bit punished, you need that shell to stay alive as Ymir. Oh, you see, I, I didn't know this about this skin on No Numbers. He turns into a little Hindu man when he, when he rolls through with, the, with the, the flag on the back. He's already a Hindu man, like right now. He yeah, stays Hindu man the whole time. I really want him to turn into it as he gets out of base. There it is. Oh, no, not that one. The other no, one. No, that uh, one's Hindu man. He looks just like him. No, that looks like Hindu man. Yeah, I know. They both look like Hindu man. Secret Gold Fury. Shh. Can I talk yet? No, it's actually a secret Gold Fury. The poppies have no clue. The, even if the poppies did know, what are they going to do? Thoth ult! That's about it. And even then, he dies. If he steps up to where that ward is on the top left side, Dardes can wall him off. He can kill him. Jerio can chase him down. The poppies, even if they had known about that gold which fury, they which, didn't. which they did not, don't know how much actual options they had in order to contest it. No numbers here. In a little bit of trouble. Pulled back, and there's the ultimate again out of the jungle. And no numbers going to be controlled. But here's help from Cherio. Fear no evil saves the life of his... Solo later. Good ultimate from no numbers. Gives him that damage reduction to live long enough in order to let Cherio get there. So here Dardes one more time, looking to be aggressive. Not going to find anything for it. Just walking into the lane, reminding people, hey guys, I'm level eight. Deal with me. So and Warchi and Draco are just like, no, you can have the red buff, dude. Just take it. Just like the Poppies wanted to pressure the right side buffs in game one, Elevate wants to pressure the left side buffs in game two. And this is a great adjustment to Elevate, not only in terms of what the Poppies drafted, but what the meta is right now. It's a lot of leaving the Hunters alone. It's giving them the, yeah. the red buff and purple buff to solo farm, as well as on the left side of the map. Everyone's saying, oh, the, you know, the Hunters get so much farm these days, and they do. Do That's it. because everyone's focusing the left side of the map and uh, the right side of the map instead of the left side of the map. Elevate says, we'll show you what we can do if you just let us run the left side. And here comes Dardes looking for another kill. Wall free is going to be walked over. Free silenced out by Draco Marino, but the carbon's still good. Pop, pop. One shot. One kill. Jermaine with the big boy plays. All of the assists from Dardes. We call them the Bruise Brothers for a reason, folks. And that right there. Proof of the pudding. No one wants to fight these guys 2v2 because nah. they work so well together. They've teamed together for so long. And honestly, I like that Dardes took that red buff because I love Jermaine that he took it. was in that lane, pushing it up, making sure that Warchi and Draco Marino didn't have anywhere to go to try and get in to contest the purple buff later on. And Dardes could use that extra damage right now. Which yes. is, I mean, you saw how much damage he did to Warchi. He's level 9. He's almost level 10. It's eight minutes in, and the support is the same level as his own jungler, and four, three levels up on Warchi. I mean, like I said, this is this uh, this game here, especially with the fact that Hun Bats fear no evil. Interesting that he's going into the Hydra's of Met. I thought we would see the raw, just the the, the raw Jotun's Wrath, the 20% CDR. But either way, Cherio and and Dardes are kind of like splitting these uh, the jungle responsibilities up. Cherio is making sure that no numbers is okay. Dardes is making sure that Jermaine and Death Panther are okay, and they're both bringing the pain. I yeah. like it. I, I love the Hydra's Lament on Cherio because you're still getting 10% CDR, not the 20 that you get from the Jotuns, but Hydra's is ev is everything that Hunbats wants because Hunbats wants to weave auto attacks in between oh, his yeah. abilities. His passive gives him that extra crit chance after he uses an ability, so you're getting that extra burst of damage. And if you get roll good, if you roll well, you find that crit. All of a sudden, instead of putting someone to 20% HP, you're killing them yeah. instantly with your combo. Yeah.
Down here, both uh, both junglers on the right side of the map, forcing Dalo's ultimate out nice and easy. Chariot with a nice teleport to the monkey, but not going to be the kill. I liked what Chariot was thinking there. He held the, the teleport because Dalo dropped the ultimate, but just waited long enough. Typhoon barely reaching where Dalo was. Chariot yeah. needed to teleport a little bit earlier and then go for the jump over the uh, the Typhoon because Dalo used the Purification Beads in response to no numbers. So that was a free kill for Elevate as long as Chariot got Fear No Evil off. But good play by Dalo gets him out of danger. Jermaine, three levels Warchi Senior. But here comes Dardes just stuck in the middle of three. Ultimate pops out. Still not much alive. you can do here. Still a lot of damage, and here comes Cherio. Darda is still alive, and Jermaine from the left side chasing players out. That is discouraging. That's what you do to Ymir. You get him out of position, he's going to want to play aggressive, and you punish him for it. Problem is, if you let him get as far ahead as Dardes is, you can't kill him. You saw how much damage he took there. What was that? Two ultimates and a lot of extra damage from the rest of the squad as well. It's just not enough to bring down Dardes. And that's the idea behind going these tank boots and shell. Yes, you're ahead, but that the, being ahead allows you to build defensively and then position that aggressively and still not get punished for it. You're going to play like you're ahead, but then when you get in trouble for playing like you're ahead, you have those things to fall back on, so you don't get punished as hard. Cherio, backside, Jermaine, front side, all about the tower. Well, for Cherio, Jermaine rolling forward, looking for Warji. But either way, the tier one tower on the left falls, three to nothing. As we approach number 11 on our clock, the Poppy's trailing by 4,000. I like what Cherio did there. Threaten Warji back, push him back with that threat of the overhead smash, and then just turn around and go right for the tower because Draco Marino was on the way. If Draco's not on the left side of the map, that's probably an easy kill yeah. for the boys of Elevate, but good patience and discipline by Cherio. Poppies. And Jermaine, I guess, by extension, but <laughs> you can tell he didn't want to do it that way. Poppies might actually get a speed buff here. Dardes again. Oh, he walls himself off. No big deal. And they walk away. And that's the threat of just having Ymir next to your buff. You have to commit an ultimate. Dalo yeah. now doesn't have that Typhoon to get away or to continue a chase. Well, Jermaine with the 57 stacks coming through. Has the help of the Ryzen. And one more time. Free Gold Fury for Elevate. 31,000 so far. The ultimate not even needed here. Just going for flare points, I suppose. And down goes the objective. Elevate pop up to 33,000 gold. Nice play right there. And the right side just being pushed as well. Elevate. They are in the driver's seat, on the road, ready to make their trip. They're, they're just gone. They're they're nearing their exit, yeah, if you they're, will. They're, they're out. They're, uh, and the poppies just have no control over the left side of the map at all. Now Dalo has to use Purification Beats again because of a perfect wall by Dardes. No numbers did commit the ultimate, but that was just with Cherio pulling the portal, de portal Demon, just seeing if anyone was going to be in the neighborhood. It does bait Dalo in enough to get his beads out. Jermaine's almost done stacking the uh, Devo Gloves. Warchi has tier one Devo Gloves. Not a good look for the left side of the map, folks. The Poppies looked great in game number one. This game, exactly opposite. I don't think Creed's going to die here. At least out of the hand of uh, Jermaine. Dalo is in some trouble. Nice reaction coming nice out from the monkey. And uh, Dalo's going to fall down. Nice cripple by Jermaine. The rolling assault actually shooting that crippling arrow. Make sure that Dalo's got nowhere to go. Quick reaction by Cherio as well. He knew that no purification beads were up for Dalo. And as soon as he showed up, even though Cherio was low and everyone was on the plan to back, just immediately drops down the totem. Wasn't the best of positioning, but still disrupts Dalo enough to secure that kill. And this is, this is the adjustment to the meta that I love to see from teams. And I love that it's Elevate making it. Just pressure out the left side. So many hunters these days. When was the last time you think a hunter lost every buff on the left-hand side of the map and had right. someone in their lane all game long? That's not been the meta for so long. Warrior, these, these, uh, just like solo laners struggled whenever junglers started camping solo instead of camping mid, the, you aren't used to playing against it, especially with how much pressure that you really have on the side of Elevate. And it's not that it's necessarily nice silence on the Chariot. Very nice on the cherry, really stopping the overhand smash there. Ultimate for Mr. Nazer, no number still, just kind of walks at him. It, it, when you're playing around with a metal like this, it's not. This might not be the best strategy to send a solo Ymir player by himself into the jungle for not one but two buff invades. 
but it's the strategy that's beating your strategy, and that's all that matters. It's just rock, paper, scissors, but yeah. there's a million options instead of just three, and that's what makes this game so difficult for these players at times and, and so exciting to watch is seeing the, 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 the mental chess that goes on. The true mental. Two, Scott. We always uh, also, shout-outs to Tolly for the chess reference. Oh, yeah. Tolly you plays know, chess every now and then. You know I got him. Even if he's not here today. Yeah, totally. Oh, man. We got, what, what else? Oh, man. I'm not going to force the issue, but we should try to back him up somehow. Nice wall. Nice dash. That was that was Dardez saying, do you remember that you can dash to this wall, buddy? Yeah, Because nobody ever uses that aspect of the dash. No numbers. Gets caught out, but a freeze on a Draco Marino. And Dardez immediately into that shards of ice. Draco takes a big chunk of damage. Good use of Ohm just for the protections. To make sure he stays safe. From no numbers and Jermaine as Dardes gets pulled back in, but it's level 13, man. And he's still walking and he's still moving and he's still walling. But Dalo from the other side takes one down. Death Panther banging the drums, puts an end to Creed's reign. And Warchi, 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 what are you doing, buddy? And he's gonna fall down. No numbers. He's got plenty of them. Three zero and three on his hunter and seven on his team. Jermaine with a. Flashy roll right outside the range of that final judgment. Elevates just putting on a clinic against the Poppies here. This is how you shut down a team really, really hard on both sides of the map. And the Poppies either needed to commit more resources to saving Warchi on the left or go all in on the right because yeah. Dardes wasn't going to be there. The Poppies just kind of didn't do anything in response to what Elevate was throwing at them. And when you allow another team to dictate the pace like Elevate has in this one, it uh, it becomes very difficult to make a comeback. I mean, that's the key. If you're gonna if you're gonna lose that early game, you can see it like seven minutes. They were down about two to three thousand gold because of the success of Dardes over there in the jungle. If, if you're gonna lose that hard, right? You got to go, you got to at least take your notes. You're letting them hit you that hard so you can take your notes and say, how are they succeeding? What are they doing? Well, they're letting Dardes do whatever the hell he wants. We got to come back and fight against it. The Poppies realize that they are up a creek without a paddle. 10,000 gold down at 14 minutes, and that'll be the surrender right there. So a 2-0. Do you have your F6 button on you still? No. Tom was literally carrying an F6 button earlier. This would have been the <laughs> perfect chance. You blew it. Darn. 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 You're, Darn. You're, you're so filled what do you with want emotion. Me to, what do you want me to say, Tom? I, Just, want you to, I want you to... I want you to have your F6 button for when the Poppy's F6 at 16 minutes. I'm going to F6 out of this conversation. Hinnie Man, save me. I'll try to. I'll try to at least. That'll be the main thing. Welcome to the desk, Taco. You're looking good today. Uh, yeah. Did oh. Matty dress you? No. Okay. Are sorry. you trolling me right no, now? No, I was being honest. Have you seen the way that he dressed? He can't even match his socks. Okay, well, well, let's go straight into the EU standings after the two games we've seen so far today. Obviously, this is the start of week three, and this is how they all look. And it's been a pretty surprising morning, I would say, watching... Was it? I, w I would say that it's surprising, yes, watching both those sets go so drastically in one direction. That's a band. I was like, make, a, make a joke about the band that I couldn't do it, unfortunately. But yeah, two EU sets down and two very quick e EU 2-0s is what we saw. I uh, still got two NA games to come a little bit later on. Let's have a look at the schedule and you should see what's coming up shortly. We'll see Kapow, also known as the Mighty Storm against Allegiance. And then following that, we've got an interesting one at the end of the day. And all eyes are on Noble and Gatekeepers, I would say, as well as that... ALG matchup versus a Mighty Storm, but mm. for Noble versus Gatekeepers, this is also a standout moment for Noble to really establish just how well this new roster for them is actually panning out. Well, we just saw that Pappy's game there at the end. Let's have a little look back at how that actual game went. What went wrong? What went wrong for the Pappies today? Because yesterday they looked fantastic. <laughs> you know, they managed to find the split against Rival, and today, different story. I, I think this is probably issue number one. I'm not certain of any reality that has ever existed where a support can just solo farm a red buff by himself without a hog, and then slowly walk over to the purple buff and do the exact same thing. But sometimes you just get away with it, and that's really the moral of the story. Dardis got away with it. Ymir is here. That's exactly what it was. Is it very classic EU style of Ymir going aggressive in the enemy jungle? It's not like we've not seen this before, but it wasn't really answered back at all. Yeah, sometimes uh, I, I sometimes saying nothing is better than saying anything I at gotcha. all, watching things unfold. But I just I got past this, by the way. If you can see this <laughs> on the camera, there is the F6 button Tom was looking for. Um, I don't know why he removed it, because he presses this on his casts all the time, and also in his... 
ranked games <laughs> if you've ever seen the stream. So that was the Pappies uh, there up against Elevate. Elevate taking the 2-0 nice and easy. And then earlier on today, we got to see the other set that happened. And that kind of went the same sort of direction for the Pappies as it did for Burrito. And a whole lot not to be said here as well. Van Squadron just had this completely on lockdown, understanding just how important this matchup actually was. Because even though most people would anticipate Valence to walk away with this one in a clean 2-0 fashion, they honestly needed the points pretty heavily in order to help influence their standings in the rest of EU. So what exactly went on in this set from your angle? Was it just Valence performing better or was there something off of Burrito today? It was certainly a clean play from Valence. I, I do feel as though compared to previous Burrito performances, this has been one of their weaker ones since their time spent in the SBL, or at least since they initially started to progress sure. and really show that development happening. I also believe that Fails and Lobster were super on point today. They, they just had so much synergy going on and that strategy with Fumballer applying so much pressure using every single aspect of AMC worked out wonderfully as well. And to get a little bit more, AMC was picked up twice in that game. We've seen a bit more AMC as time goes on. We've seen in mid, now in the dual lane a little bit more. Is the rise of the B back? Uh, potentially, it all depends on how teams are choosing to respond because sometimes it's just a flavor of the month god or flavor of the month items. I mean, Hide of the Urchin is probably a pretty prime example of this sort of stuff going on. Well, pretty prime. He wasn't playing today. He may be playing tomorrow, but let's have a look.